When plastics were first developed, they were seen as space-age miracle materials that had unique properties, making them superior in various aspects to metal, glass, wood, and paper. Soon, plastics were showing up in all kinds of products and all kinds of industries. People began experimenting with additives to create new types and functions of plastic, to make new products and new technologies. At first, it seemed like there was no downside to this wonder material, aside from its petroleum origin. But it turns out, many of these additives being introduced to the plastic to give it certain properties, well, many of those additives turned out to be harmful. A new paper has come out this year, exploring the harmful effects of one of these additives, and what needs to be done to address this contamination issue. The paper, published in the American Journal of Public Health, identifies phthalates, synthetic chemical additives used to make plastic more flexible and durable, as a topic of urgent concern. Plastics with these phthalate additives are used to make tons of stuff. To quote a CNN article about the research, quote, Phthalates are found in hundreds of auto, home, food, and personal care items. Food packaging, detergents, vinyl flooring, clothing, furniture, and shower curtains, automotive plastics, lubricating oils and adhesives, rain and stain-resistant products, and scores of products including shampoo, soap, hairspray, and nail polish, in which they make fragrances last longer." Unquote. Phthalates are also used in PVC pipes, medical tubing, children's toys, and a lot more. Frighteningly, there have even been dozens of studies, including many I've covered on this podcast, about the dangers of phthalates and other additives. This contamination has been linked to obesity, cancer, asthma, heart conditions, and due to their effect as endocrine disruptors, there's also growing evidence that this contamination is causing genital malformations and may be contributing to the low sperm counts and testosterone levels in adult males across the world. The new paper specifically explores the relationship between phthalate exposure and neurological development in fetuses, infants, and young children. After reviewing all these studies on phthalate exposure, their work has found some disturbing data. They identified that phthalate exposure was strongly correlated to aggression and hyperactivity, citing multiple studies such as one that found a significant positive correlation between amount of phthalates in the mother's urine in the second trimester and the likelihood of the child being diagnosed with ADHD. Another study found that higher levels of in utero exposure to phthalates were correlated to deficits in IQ, perceptual reading, and verbal comprehension. Other findings mentioned in the paper include, quote, poorer psychomotor development and impaired social communication, unquote. The critical detail here seems to be the timing of the exposure. Phthalates are metabolized by the body relatively quickly, so their effect is fleeting. But if it happens at the wrong time, at the wrong point in development, the results can be profoundly harmful. Now, the paper also discusses the variation among phthalates. They vary in the harm they can cause, and some of them, such as diisononeal phthalate and diisodecal phthalate, have no link to neurological or behavioral disorders. Nonetheless, there are still several much more dangerous phthalates out there. Lead author Dr. Stephanie Engel said, quote, We have enough evidence right now to be concerned about the impact of these chemicals on a child's risk of attention, learning, and behavioral disorders. Unquote. She also said, quote, we're exposed to multiple phthalates, and that mixture can come within a single product, but also across multiple products that people are exposed to in a day. The reality is that we need to think of phthalates as a class, because that's how people are exposed to them." Unquote. Needless to say, the authors of the paper ultimately call for a total ban on the entire class of phthalates, citing this ongoing and worsening contamination problem. In the CNN article on this paper, a few paragraphs are spent exploring the economic dimensions to this issue. There are many safer alternatives to some of these additives, but the economic incentive to replace them isn't quite there yet. However, some companies are plowing ahead, like Apple, which has largely removed all phthalates from its products. Just like the endocrine disruptor bisphenol A, or BPA, was removed from baby bottles and eventually banned from industry at the behest of the American Chemistry Council, we must also remove these damaging phthalates from consumer products. 
I think this is one of those issues that's going to become a scandal in retrospect, when enough time has passed and we can look back and see how entire generations of people were affected by this contamination. And due to the scale of this contamination, and the powerful effect that hormone-mimicking chemicals can have on a fetus or infant or young child, I think we're going to be quite shocked and appalled by the full extent and magnitude of the effects of this contamination. Oh.